in today's video, I will show you 10 easy tips to help you rank up almost instantly. So be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. It only takes a second and it helps me out massively. Starting off with the number one, you need to take advantage of sound. So let's say you are roaming on the top floor of Chalet and your team starts screaming, they are rushing inside hell. Naturally, you vault over to go to the stairs. Right? Actually, let's do this again. Listen very carefully what happens when I land. It makes a shit ton of sound. So the next time you want to vault over somewhere, use your shots to cover your sounds. Just like this. And of course, this works even better with a suppressor. And the reasoning behind this is, in a game of 10 people, someone shooting randomly or shooting a window, a flower pot, or even just a random preflow tip is so normal that no one's gonna expect you to drop somewhere just because they hear one sound. That is, if you didn't make it too obvious, so start using this to cover your sounds and get back to side safer. And the second spot up on my list is go into camps when you're dead. When you are dead, your game is not over, you're not out, you are simply on cam duty. Using cameras when you're dead isn't just about staying involved, it is actually quite a crucial thing if you want to win. You don't just gather information by watching your enemy's movements or objective interactions, which then also helps your team to stay informed and make decisions based off that. By calling out UTC, you can actually guide your teammates, warn them of potential flanks, or even recommend them to do something, but be sure not to backseat game because not everyone enjoys that. Just don't forget that when you're dead, your role shifts from a combat soldier to a scout. So remember, effective camera use involves placing them smartly before you die if you're a Valkyrie or Maestro or you have a Bulletproof, and then switching between them fairly quickly so that you can gather all the info you need to communicate it as clearly and quickly and mindful to your teammates. Next up, we got a thing that so many people in Lorings don't seem to know, and that is that you can open K attaches with a Termite or an ace. If you see a K detached, just place your turn charge right next to it, just like I do right here. And you see that the hatch opens. Same thing works with ace, just put one close left and close right of the hatch, and the moment both go off, you have your hatch open. So the next time you're facing a K and your teammates forgot to bring EMPs, use this trick and never be stuck with other open hatching. Have you ever wondered why some people just seem to have better sound than you and they hear footsteps so much better than you? That is probably because they are on night mode. When you are playing on night mode, sounds like gunshots, explosions and ambient noise get reduced and stuff like footsteps are getting boosted so that they are a bit louder and more clearly for you to hear. So be sure to go into the settings and put it on night mode. I know barricading doors or barricading windows is a great thing to do and it's a very easy way to distract your enemies because they have to punch it open which makes a ton of noise and only then they can actually continue taking map, going to site, whatever. But please do not barricade site. Just imagine you're roaming across the map, you want to go back to site because you have a 5 versus 3 man advantage and suddenly everything is barricaded off and you can't get back. Not only is this super frustrating, but it most likely also will get you killed. So please think of your teammates, don't barricade sides. You can prep barricades, but not just normal windows or doors, but also castle barricades. If you do it on a normal window or a door, it's just two punches in one corner and you're able to vault through them. But you can also prep a castle barricade with eight punches. And if you then punch it on ninth time, the barricade will be destroyed. If you don't know how to learn basic callouts, you can always use your compass to learn basic room names. As long as you have your compass on, you will always see the name of a room. If you place a yellow ping into your next room, you can also see the name of that room. That way, you have a way easier time learning calls than just going through every map. Oh, this is bedroom. Oh, this is kids. Oh, this is pet. Simple callouts, like on the compass, are almost always enough. And you don't really need the advanced callouts for just getting into the game and learning everything. You have probably heard about termite tracking, but have you heard about a Hibana trick before? It is so simple, yet so little people actually do it. All you need to do is place six pallets on top, six pallets on the bottom, and then just turn them on. Now what this did is it made the whole wall soft. So if you now have an ash buck, Sophia, or a shotgun, you can simply just open this like you would with a Maverick. 
learning how to properly aim and getting a proper aim routine is super, super hard. But fortunately, in Siege, we have the shooting range. With the shooting range, you can train a lot of things. If it's just recoil, flicking or tracking, we all have it already built in the game. So be sure to really use it to your advantage. And if you need a little routine, I also have my own routine that you can use. If you want to do so, click on the info button in the top right. And for the last tip, please stop caring about your stats. Your KD simply doesn't matter. Of course, there will always be people who will say, Oh, you only have a 1.1 KD. Oh, you have a 0.9 KD. But in the end, it doesn't really matter because Rainbow Six is a team game. Of course, there's going to be a lot of people that have those 1.6, 1.8, 1.9 KDs. But do they really play for the team? Do they really play the game the way it's intended to be played? Or do they simply just cosplay Call of Duty Black Ops 6 in Rainbow Six? And for the bonus tip of this video, always place two claymores behind each other if you're placing them for a flank. So that if he was to get flanked or get injured and the defuser is already down and the enemy goes to finish you first and only shoots one claymore, the second one will instantly activate and he will get injured or instant die. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. It would help me out massively. Until the next video, 